today we're talking all about how to parent your Virgo child and how to reparent the Virgo adult. As you know, reparenting is a big theme of this channel. I have a playlist on recovering from narcissistic abuse and reparenting is part of that. In other words, giving yourself everything you needed as a kid, but as an adult. So those of us who, like me, are reparenting ourselves while learning how to parent our kids have an especially challenging time because it takes a lot of energy and uh, that is why I'm here to help. If you don't know me, I'm Maria Rieger, your resident Gemini, and this is Positive Parenting with Astrology. So let's get into all about the Virgo child. Now Virgo is mutable earth, very interesting energy. So being an earth sign, it is a feminine energy sign. It is an intuitive energy. Uh, it is, uh, as an earth energy, it's also more grounded than the other uh, non-earth signs. It has a stabilizing energy. It is, however, interestingly ruled by Mer Mercury. And it is interesting to think about the fact that both Gemini and Virgo are ruled by Mercury, although the energies are so different. So first of all, where you see the big similarity is in Virgo's precision, use of precision of language, precise language, specific language, and attention to detail. Okay, you may not think about those things when you think about Gemini, but in other videos, which I'll link to below, uh, I talk about the great gift of Gemini energy, which is using language, precise language, to distinguish and differentiate concepts, uh, using very clear communication. And as I talk about a lot on this channel, Often when we communicate, we have a very clear idea in our heads what we intend to communicate, but that's not what comes out when we verbally articulate and the other party does not understand what we're talking about. We're frustrated that the other party doesn't understand, etc. And this can create a whole bunch of, you know, problems and mishaps in relationships, including our relationships with our children. So my point is, this is an area of overlap. Uh, where Virgo and Gemini have something in common. What are the very few areas where they have something in common? Is this attention to detail regarding language and the use of precise language that we're going to talk about? You can definitely expect your Virgo child to pay very close attention to how people verbally articulate things and to ask follow-up questions and to point out when things are not being communicated clearly to them, okay? So uh, expect them to point those things out to you and bring those things up. Virgo is a practical energy. It also, dare I say, can be bossy. Okay, we talk about this in uh, my videos on how to parent your Capricorn children, that the, the kids can be almost like the parents, uh, a little bit bossy or a little bit uh, directive. Virgo has that quality too. Um, all the Earth energies like to have kind of control over their environment. Not necessarily control, uh, more like stability. They like to have a stable environment. But Capricorn and Virgo do like to assert control and have some control and say in their environment and things that happen to them. So this can sometimes show up in the Virgo child being a bit bossy. It's just something to be aware of. There are ways that we're going to talk about the ways where you as the parent can deal with that aspect of the Virgo nature in a healthy way where you're honoring the child's bid for autonomy, but you're also as the parent instituting rules and boundaries. So the first main area I want to point out is that Virgo people are perfectionists. If you know anyone with strong Virgo energy, you will know that this is the case, okay? They like things to be perfect. They are detail-oriented. They like things to run smoothly. So uh, the risk of this is that one of the reasons why people procrastinate and don't accomplish things that they want to accomplish is because they can't get something to be perfect. So they think, well, I can't get this to be perfect, so I'm not going to do it. Or I'm just not even going to attempt it. Or they, they like things to be perfect on their first attempt. And that is not uh, practical to think like that. It is rarely, it rarely happens that you get things perfect on the first attempt. Like, look, I'm an author. I'm not capable of just writing an entire book from beginning to end and have it be perfect. It requires multiple edits by myself, by copy editors, by beta readers, other things. It's just not possible. So, you know, of all of the, the zodiac energies, Virgo is probably the most prone to this dynamic 
where they they want things to be perfect on the first try. And that's not 99.9% of the time, not how life works. So you want to teach your Virgo kids that it is okay not to be perfect all the time. It is normal for things not to be perfect on the first attempt. And just because things aren't perfect doesn't mean that they're not good or positive in some way. Uh, just because things aren't perfect doesn't mean that things are not meaningful, including things that the Virgo child creates. Like they may create a drawing that's not perfect, but is still a good drawing and still has meaning and is still fulfilling for them. I mean, think about all the, the regret you would feel if you did not do things, right? If you procrastinated because you knew something would could not be perfect, so you didn't do it. There's a lot of regret involved with that. There's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of just ill feeling because you have not accomplished things that you set out to accomplish that you intended to. So these are things you want to convey and talk about uh, with to your Virgo child. That yes, we strive for perfection and we strive for our best. And sometimes, you know, our best is good enough, even if it doesn't uh, result in things that are perfect. You have to also have realistic expectations about how things turn out, right? You may think that a relationship with a friend may turn out a certain way and it may not. So we have to have realistic expectations about human relationships and about other things. And as I'm always saying on this channel, you want to praise your Virgo child's efforts more than the outcome. It's fine to say, hey, this is a great drawing or uh, I hope you're proud of how well you did on that test. But you also want to be praising their efforts. We don't want to suggest that a Virgo child or any child's worth, self-worth is linked to their intrinsic output, like grades, things like that. And we'll talk about this in a few minutes, but this is definitely a risk with the Virgo kids. So you want to make sure you're, praise, you're praising their efforts more than the outcome. Uh, praise their hard work, praise their, um, you know, the time they dedicated toward learning a new task or the time they dedicated to studying and things like that. The second big thing I want to talk about is you have to be careful not to parentify your Virgo child. I talk about this at length when I talk about uh, Capricorn energy. So parentifying means, as we know, when the parent kind of treats the child as if the child were the parent, giving the child uh, too much adult level responsibility that is um, way more than the ch that is appropriate for the child's age and development. Okay. This is always a risk, almost always a risk with Virgo kids and Capricorn kids. Virgo nature is very comfortable taking on responsibility. It makes the Virgo person feel good. It is tied to their sense of self-worth. You have to be careful about that. Uh, you know, Virgos are very dutiful. They are loyal. They kind of rise to the challenge and take on responsibility and they're comfortable doing that. So you have to understand that just because a child appears to be okay taking on adult level responsibility does not mean it's healthy for them to do so, right? Because it's also um, a stoic energy. It is an emotionally controlled stoic energy. All the earth signs are. So a Virgo child may not communicate to the parent how uncomfortable they are or how overwhelmed they are they may feel somehow that like they need to be in control so they don't want to show or communicate that they are overwhelmed so it is the parent's job to monitor things and you know be attuned to the child and to see and determine whether the child is taking on too much responsibility doesn't have enough time or other things right you want to make sure that the child is not overwhelmed. It is the parent's responsibility to make sure that the child is not emotionally overwhelmed and overburdened and taking on too much responsibility. You want to make sure that the responsibility they're taking on is age appropriate and appropriate to their development. Now, that's not to say they should not have responsibility. Virgo children absolutely need to have responsibility in the home, right? It is appropriate for them to manage their school workload, uh, make their bed, do their own laundry, put clothes away, help with dishes, help with chores, help feed animals, all those things. It is appropriate and essential for a Virgo child to have those responsibilities. They feel good with it. They uh, it, it breeds self-confidence and self-esteem that I can do this. I'm capable of doing these things, cooking, all these things. It is appropriate and recommended that all kids and Virgo kids, including Virgo kids, uh, you know, 
pitch in and help the family team and have age-appropriate responsibilities. What are uh, some examples of inappropriate responsibilities? Uh, kids should not be 100% responsible for the welfare of younger siblings. To an extent, yes, when they're older, but they should not be 100% responsible. They should not be responsible for making sure there is food in the house. Yes, older kids can certainly be asked about to help with meal prep and meal planning and cooking and that kind of thing. But making sure the pantry is stocked, making sure there is food at home is ultimately the responsibility of the adults in the household. It is also not appropriate for uh, children to make sure the adults get up and wake up on time for the day. Clearly, that is the adult's responsibility. I remember one time I overslept and my kid was like, this is when he was younger, it was like gaming on his phone. And I uh, didn't realize what time it was. And I woke up and I was like, well, we're going to be late for school. And he apologized. And I said, it is not your responsibility to make sure the adults are awake on time. Not your responsibility, right? Not a child's responsibility to determine what bills get paid that month. I actually talked to adults who told me when they were kids, and I'm talking seven, eight, nine years old, their parents asked them, well, we only have X amount of money this month. What, should, what bills should we pay? not appropriate okay that puts so much anxiety and pressure on children and that is a really good example of something that a virgo child would take on if a parent told a virgo child i need your help determining what bills to pay a virgo child would do it and would not complain about it right so you the parent have to police that you have to be in charge of determining what's appropriate what's appropriate for the child uh, to do, right, as far as responsibility and what is too much. This is very important. You gotta teach Virgo kids, they are responsible for themselves and their own well being. They're not responsible for other people. Yes, when a kid grows up into an adult and has a relationship, you're responsible for your partner to an extent, but ultimately, you're not responsible to fix other people's problems. Virgo is a fixing energy. I talked in other videos about Capricorn and how Capricorn moons are very responsible, how everyone runs to them in a crisis. Ask me how I know about that. Capricorn moon myself. There was a time in my life, I, I was literally, my whole life was about just fixing crisis after crisis after crisis instituted by somebody important in my life. And I was like, why this person is, is an adult? Why are they not dealing with this? Why am I dealing with the crises that they create? That's what you want to avoid with Virgo kids, okay? They are not, you know, it is not their responsibility, whether they're Virgo adults or Virgo kids, not the responsibility to fix other people's problems. And this becomes more of an issue as kids get older, become adolescents and teens, and then as they're teens, they start relationships with friends, maybe with girlfriends or boyfriends and things like this. And there's, there's that tendency may start to show itself more in earnest. And you want to be very careful about that. Well, response, some responsibility is good, okay? Breed self-confidence, all the things we talked about. They are not responsible for other people. They are not responsible for the well-being of other people. They are not responsible for the emotional experience of other people. They are not responsible to be continually fixing other people's problems, okay? That's the message you want to be showing them. Because otherwise, that is a fast descent to burnout okay and as teenagers maybe they don't realize it because you have a lot of energy and you know you're youthful all these things but you start to get 30 35 40 45 years old a lifetime of that behavior leads to burnout and often physical and mental illness okay so teach your kids when they're young that first they're responsible for themselves and their well-being and then they can take care of other people but they should not be continually fixing other people's problems and continually responsible for other people. Now, check in with your Virgo child periodically to, to see about this, to ask them, hey, how do you feel about the level of responsibility you have right now? How do you feel about school? Is it too fast paced, too slow paced? Um, is, are you learning what you wanna be learning? Do you wanna be learning different things? How do you feel with the level of responsibility at home? Yeah, kids may say, oh, I have too many chores. But you'll know, uh, you'll know, uh, I mean, you know your kids best, right? You'll, you'll be able to figure out if it's that they're just complaining about doing chores in general, which almost all kids do, versus like they are just completely overwhelmed and overburdened by the level of responsibility they have. And you need to look for those physical signs of burnout too. 
you know, excessive anger. They're angrier than usual. They're more fatigued than usual. Uh, they're crying more than usual. Okay, those are all signs that they may have burnout, stomach aches, headaches. In kids, those are almost telltale signs of anxiety. I talked to a lot of parents who who had their kids worked up for stomach problems and they the workup revealed nothing. But as soon as the school year ended, the stomach problems disappear. That's a really good indicator that school is stressful in some way. Either something, something is happening in school or the child is internalizing a lot of pressure and anxiety. And that's a big risk with Virgo kids. Um, they internalize a lot of that pressure and anxiety. And teachers now, I find when I talk to kids and parents, teachers are putting a lot of pressure on kids to perform and perform standardized tests and do well. And they talk to them really early about like college and stuff. So the kids are feeling, I find that they're feeling a lot of anxiety and pressure from the schools, right? And then the parents put unknowingly sometimes put more pressure on the kids, ask them about school. Why didn't you get this, you know, why did you get this bad grade, blah, blah, blah. Why aren't you studying? So their kids are getting this pressure from, from all ends. And obviously, like, it's hard to deal with and it causes a lot of physical symptoms. So you want to be very careful about this. Uh, a parenting coach recently told me, you know, if when you talk to your kids about like grades and study habits, you're not telling them anything they have not already heard, like at school and other places. They've already heard this. You have to get good grades to get into good college. They've heard it. You know, you have to study to get better grades. They've heard it. OK, so um, I don't want to go too far in detail about this particular uh, aspect because I could go go on all day about how to communicate to your kids consciously and how to take the pressure you know off of them and how to encourage um, you know intrinsic motivation instead of you instead of the parents harping on grades that's a different uh, topic for another day but my point here is that kids are getting a lot of pressure regarding school and grades from a lot of different sources not to mention like social media and other things so, um, which is certainly different from when our generation was kids. So that's something to be aware of. And Virgo kids, as because they're so perfectionist and they're intent on achievement, my point is they tend to internalize a lot of that stress. So you need to be really attuned for to see those signs of stress in your children. Always tell your Virgo child, you know, uh, I'm here if you want to talk. If there's anything you need to talk about, talk to me about. I'm here anytime. You can talk to me about anything. Just encourage them to talk to you. Don't pressure them to talk to you, but encourage them to talk to you. And then you're always available if they have to, if they want to talk about anything, grades, what's going on at school, anything. Now, these kids need a lot of independence and autonomy. They love to be in charge of themselves. They love to take responsibility for themselves. They love to organize their space. Okay, so you can respect this energy by giving them opportunities to display this energy and use this energy in an age appropriate and developmentally appropriate way. How? By helping them, having them pitch in at home. We already talked about helping them, having them do chores, meal plan, things like that. Letting them uh, determine or have a say in how the room is organized, how the room is decorated, things like this. Uh, having, letting them have a say in their schedule what after school activities they do, what days, how they manage their workload, when they study, things like that. Obviously, it's got to be appropriate, right? No studying late at night, not a good idea on school days. But to the extent that you can, let them have a say in like when they do certain chores, when they study, organizing the schedule that uh, honors the energy. And also, um, when, when we give kids more opportunities for autonomy, then they are much more willing to cooperate with parents, right? Also, let them have a say in, for example, where we go on family vacations, what we have for dinner. Also, uh, when kids are old enough, you let them be at home. First, you know, you can um, uh, let them be at home for like 30 minutes or 60 minutes by themselves. And then obviously that can that time frame can grow longer and longer as kids uh, demonstrate that they have they are mature enough to do what they have to do when the parents are not home. I find a lot of kids, and maybe it's where I live because the D.C. area is just very competitive and there's a lot of overparenting and stuff. Um, I find that a lot of parents don't like to leave kids at home alone, even like 14, 15 year olds. And I'm wondering why that is. And these are kids that are, you know, meeting with developmental milestones. Obviously, we're not talking about kids who have other developmental issues where they, they can't be alone. 
And I'm wondering why that is. Like, why? Like, I mean, at some point, yes, we're concerned about safety, but at some point, a 14 or 15 year old should be able to be home alone for a few hours, right? And feed themselves and things like this. So it is okay. I'm telling you, it is okay to leave your kid home alone as long as it is developmentally appropriate, okay? And if you're worried about it, make sure they have a way of contacting you. Uh, cell phones are the things they can contact you if something is happening, right? And make sure that they know all the safety things to do uh, in case stuff happens. But um, that is part of like the normal childhood developmental experience is having some time where they're alone at home. So they're in charge of themselves and then they have the opportunity to rise to the occasion and demonstrate to the parents how mature they are and that they can feed themselves and do their homework and things like this. So the Virgo kids especially need that independence and autonomy and they need the parent to trust them to an extent. And we've talked a lot on this channel about uh, when, when you, a person who is incapable of trust, who doesn't trust you, they're demonstrating to the other person in the relationship that they are themselves not trustworthy. And I see that with a lot of parents and children. The parents inherently don't trust the kids, but what happens is the kids think of themselves, they internalize that as, well, I'm something's wrong with me, I can't be trusted, and they also don't trust the parents. I believe that we should give trust in order to get trust. Now, when trust is broken, it needs to be addressed. But I would not recommend that we inherently mistrust our kids. My point here is that Virgo kids need you know, to earn parents' trust. They like to feel that they are trustworthy and the parents trust them. It makes them feel good. Now, clearly, if they do something to break the trust, it needs to be addressed. But, um, you know, it is important that you honor that Virgo need for autonomy. Now, respect that analytical nature of Virgo, respect that emotional stoicism, that emotional control. Virgo can have this kind of negative stereotype of being emotionally cold. It's not true. Virgos are not emotionless. They are not cold. Uh, I talked about a similar dynamic in my videos on Capricorn kids, but they, is it, it is an emotionally controlled energy, but you never want to be suggesting to your Virgo child that they are somehow cold or emotionless because of that stoicism. That is part of the nature. Virgo by default analyzes. It's, its default energy, its default approach to things is to analyze, be analytical and calculating, maybe weighing pros and cons. That's just the nature of the sign. Virgo also respects authority. Now, when we talked in my Capricorn videos, I mentioned that Capricorn respects authority, but Capricorn does not respect incompetent authority. Virgo is a rule follower and Virgo respects authority. Now, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know that I teach to, I, I encourage you to teach your kids to question authority, not just for the sake of questioning authority, but to, to always, you know, observe and question authority if there's a need for it. So while respecting authority is good, you also want to be teaching your Virgo kids to analyze and question authority when they intuit that something is not right, okay? They need to think for themselves, not just follow orders, because Virgo is a rule follower. That makes Virgo kids sometimes easier to manage in school. Like, those kids are usually the ones the teachers call, oh, these are good kids, they do what they're supposed to do, blah, blah, blah. That's fine, but... You want to make sure they're not just following rules for the sake of following rules. You want to make sure they're thinking for themselves and you want to make sure that they are questioning those rules that are unethical and immoral. Because as adults, there will always be a time when we are confronted with rules, whether at work or in our personal lives, that are unethical or immoral. And I could go on and on about the dangers of groupthink and what that does, especially in like a college situation when parents are not around. But it is essential that your kids make the right decisions, even if everyone around them is making the wrong decision, is doing the wrong thing. OK, so that's what I'm talking about when I when I say uh, make sure you're teaching your Virgo kids to find a respect authority, but also to question it when it's warranted and even go against authority again when it's warranted and when going against authority means doing the right thing. Now, the last big thing I want to mention is Virgo is a planner. 
it is a huge planning energy. If you are a parent with a lot of fire in your chart, you like to fly by the seat of your pants, live by the seat of your pants, you don't like to make plans, you like to see where the wind carries you, you're going to have a more challenging time understanding your Virgo child. They like to plan. Like all the earth signs, they like to know what's coming next. They don't like to live by the seat of their pants to see where the wind takes them. I don't like that either. I have an earth moon, that's why. So you need to respect that about the sign, okay? They, they like to know what's coming next. Sometimes they take a while to make decisions because they're analyzing pros and cons. Again, respect that about the sign. They may need a lot of information before making decisions. That is okay. You can tell them you can take more time if you need, or if they have to make a decision sooner rather than later, you can tell them, look, whatever decision you make now based on the information you have is a good decision, right? If it doesn't work out like you thought, it does not mean it was a bad decision, just that maybe you didn't have all the information at that time, okay? Again, it's a sign that's ruled by Mercury. So you could expect it to be very analytical, take time to make decisions, and constantly weigh pros and cons and constantly analyze new information that comes in. Okay, so similar to Gemini. One of the only ways it's similar to Gemini in that respect. So if you're a fire sign parent, your, your Virgo child's decision making is probably going to annoy you because they're going to take longer to make decisions. But it's because of the nature of how they make decisions. So you have to respect that to the extent that you can. And to the extent that you can, do not pressure them to make decisions. Now, uh, as we wrap up here, I want to say I have a whole playlist on how to parent Capricorn kids. So if you want more information on how to reparent and parent Capricorn energy, you can uh, check that out in my playlist. And I will be back very soon with another video. If you have any requests for videos, because this video is at the request of a viewer, you can leave your requests in the comments below and I will get to them forthwith. And thank you very much.